Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, what is a graph? And we're talking about graph theory graphs. So you might have seen something like this called a graph. This is not what we're talking about when we say graph. So without further ado, let's get into the meat of the lesson. So here is an example of a graph called G. And what makes up this graph? Of course, the whole point of the video is to answer the question, what is a graph? So what do we see here? What is this graph made of? Well, it's made of two types of objects. It's made of these things called vertices and these things here that connect pairs of vertices called edges. So just to reiterate, those black circles are called vertices. They're often called nodes also, but we're going to call them vertices and the blue lines that join pairs of vertices are called edges. And before going any further, I also want to mention that what we're talking about today is called a simple graph. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but to make it clear as quickly as I can, this is called a simple graph because this isn't allowed, this isn't allowed, and this isn't allowed. So this, what I drew here, is a loop. It's an edge from one vertex to itself. That's not allowed in a simple graph. Here, what I drew is multiple edges joining the same pair of vertices. One edge, two edge, two edges are not allowed to join the same pair of vertices in a simple graph. And then lastly, this head, arrow head that I put there is giving direction to this blue edge. Edges in simple graphs don't have direction. Now with that lightning lesson on simple graphs out of the way, let's continue talking about simple graphs, which are usually just called graphs. So this is all fine and dandy, but what is a formal definition of a graph? Because that's really what we want. Well, a graph that we'll call G, of course, is an ordered pair with some vertex set that we'll call V and some edge set that we'll call E. And like I said, it's an ordered pair. So it's important that the vertex set comes first and then the edge set comes second. So if we wanted to write out this graph up here in this way, how would we do it? Well, right now we can't because we haven't labeled the vertices or edges in this graph. It's currently unlabeled. So without any names to put to the vertices or edges, we can't write it out explicitly with all of its vertices and edges in this form. And sometimes this is fine. Sometimes all we want is this visual representation of a graph, and that's really what you want to look at the graph's structure. But for the sake of this lesson, we're gonna throw some labels down. So we'll call this vertex one, this one two, and this one three, and this one four. Hope you can read those numbers all right. So then, if we wanna write the graph out in this form, how do we do it? Well, I'm going to erase this so that we have some more room to write it out, and let's start. So G, again, is an ordered pair, so we open up the ordered pair, and then the vertex set comes first, so we open up the vertex set, and what do we put in it? Well, of course, we put in the vertices. One, two, three, and four. Those are the four vertices in the graph G. So those are the four objects that go in the vertex set. Then comes the edge set. The edge set is a little trickier. It's comprised of two element subsets of the vertex set. The two elements that go into each subset are vertices that are joined by an edge. And I know that might be a little unclear, so let's just look at an example. Here we have an edge joining vertex one and two. So to represent that in the edge set, we write a set that has the vertices one and two in it. And that's all there is. You could also write it as the set containing two, one. Remember that doesn't matter because sets are not ordered. So then two is joined with three. So we also have to write the edge two, three in there. And again, you could write it as three, two, doesn't matter. Order of the vertices doesn't matter. All that matters is that they're joined by an edge. And I'll go ahead and write the rest of these out. So here we go. This is the graph G written out explicitly as an ordered pair with this vertex set and this edge set. And you can see all the edges here in the set so we already went over one, two, which is right there, and two, three, which is right there. I just rewrote it so that it would fit more nicely. And let's look at the other edges. One and three are joined by an edge. We see that represented there. Two and four are joined by an edge. We see that represented there. 
three and four, that's right there, and one and four, right there. And I wrote all of these with the lower numbered vertex first and the higher numbered vertex second. I just wanna make sure it's absolutely clear that is not important. You could write all of these edge sets in reverse order, so two, one, three, one, four, one, three, two, that does not matter. Again, all that matters in the edge set is that the vertices you list in these subsets are joined by an edge. And I'll also mention that in this case, this graph G that we see here is an example of a complete graph because every pair of vertices is joined by an edge. And if, in a graph, every pair of vertices is joined by an edge, we call it a complete graph. But I'll talk more about those in a different lesson. Now, one other thing I wanna touch on is the visual representations of a graph. So, like I said, a graph is an ordered pair with a vertex and an edge set. That's a formal definition of a graph, but we can also draw them like you see here. And let's name these graphs. So this one is G, and this one is, whoops, that was a bad H. This one is H. The point I wanna make here is that while these graphs look different, this one is the one we just talked about, and this one looks different, they are in fact the same graph. You can draw any graph in an infinite number of ways, but what's important is what vertices and edges it has. So two graphs are equal if they have the same vertex set and the same edge set. So are these graphs here equal? Indeed, they are. And how do we know? Well, like I said, we know they're equal if they have the same vertex and edge sets. So let's go through it. Graph G has vertices 1, 2, 3, and 4. Graph H, similarly, has vertices 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we just have to look at the edges. 1 is joined with 2, 1 is joined with 2, 2 with 3, 2 with 3, whoops, that was bad, 2 with 3, Three is joined with four. We see three is joined with four over there. One is joined with four, and one is joined with four over here. And then we have two, four, and one, three in G. And we also have two, four, and one, three in H. So we see clearly there that these graphs, G and H, have the same vertex and edge sets. Thus, we can say that G is equal to H. So again, you can draw graphs to look totally different when they might in fact be the same graph. Just as another example, let's say we had these two vertices, vertex one and two. We could join them with an edge like that, and that's a fine graph. And that graph is indeed the same as this graph, where one and two are joined by this ridiculous edge. All that makes them equal is that they have the same vertex set, one and two, and the same edge set namely an edge joining one and two. I know it looks like a mess, but I hope the point is clear. One other thing I wanna talk about is the empty graph. What is the empty graph? Well, an empty graph is any graph that has an empty edge set. So it's an ordered pair with some vertex set and an empty edge set. So a graph like this, or like this, or like this, it has vertices, but no edges. That is allowed, it's perfectly fine, and we call such graphs empty graphs. The only other sort of tricky bit is that if the graph has no vertices either, so if it has an empty vertex set and an empty edge set, whoops, I don't know why I wrote that extra comma, so an empty vertex set and an empty edge set, this is sometimes considered a graph and sometimes not. It depends on the author and the text. So just be aware that this could be considered a graph or not considered a graph, depending on what you're reading. If it is considered a graph, it's sometimes referred to specifically as the null graph, which is the empty graph, but with zero vertices. And then lastly, let's just look at an example with some words. So this is an example of how a graph can represent objects and how the objects are related. And that's really what graphs are all about. So let's say Alice, Bob, Cody, Dan, Eric, and Fred, um, six intrepid heroes, are going to a hootenanny, a party, a fiesta. They're going to have a good time. And at this most celebratory event, they are shaking hands. And we want to write a graph, draw a graph, that represents the people at the party and who has shaken hands. Well, we've got our objects over here, the names of the party goers, and we have the relations over here which are the pairs of people who have shaken hands. So how are we going to draw our graph? 
Well, to begin with, we need the vertices, which represent all of the objects in this situation. In particular, it represents the people. So I've labeled each vertex with the first letter of the party goers' names. And now all that's left for the edges is to join the people who have shaken hands. So I'll write the edges in blue. We see that Alice shook Eric and Fred's hands. So we have to join A with the E vertex and with the F vertex. We see that Bob and Cody shook hands, so we can join the Bob vertex with the Cody vertex, and Fred shook Bob and Eric's hands, so we will join F with the B vertex, and we will join F with the E vertex. And that's just an example of how easily we can use a graph to represent objects and how they relate to each other. It's a very classic, often used graph theory example, but I think it's a good one because it doesn't leave much room for confusion. So again, a graph is just an ordered pair with vertices and edges. The ordered pair has a vertex set, and then it has an edge set. We see our vertices here are these black circles, and the edges are the blue lines that join pairs of vertices. I could go on, there's lots of great stuff to talk about with graph theory, but I think that's enough for today. We'll go over lots of other graph theory stuff in other lessons. So I hope this video helped you understand what a graph is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait for my world to turn.